Gundam.tk presents Crossbone Gundam XO Ghost. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert184, 2 hours to bs Gundam Reviews.net, and today I'm taking a look, it's not a review per se, of a custom paint job. Here you've got the Crossbone Gundam XO, instead of this is painted from the old Crossbone Gundam X1 version KA, and this is from the new manga, Crossbone Gundam Ghost. Crossbone Gundam Ghost is the fourth series, I suppose, from Crossbone Gundam, which is sort of cool because A, it's written by Yoshiyuki Tomino. So even though it's only in manga and it hasn't been animated, it's still got a pretty high status in the eyes of fans. Not to mention the fact that it's just a lot of fun to read. Six volumes in the original run, and then after that there was Steel Heart, or Skull Heart for one volume, and then Steel 7 for three more, so Ghost is going to be following up on that. It's serialized every month in Gundam Ace, and then will eventually get collected into books like this. Now one thing that's fantastic about the whole run is that Hasegawa Yuichi did the art on it and his role in the whole series has expanded over time. And he's also done a whole bunch of other Gundam stuff, but noticeably the V Gundam, this is the guy down here, it's just side stories from Victory Gundam and this is a lot of fun to read. But the cool part about this is that Crossbone Gundam being the late Universal Century, all they've done is they've taken Ghost and they make it, what, 20 years after the fact? And you have Tobia Aronax, if that's really him, uh, the guy who went, well, I shouldn't really spoil it. Anyway, comes back as the cool older senpai, and he's going to be piloting the Ghost, and he's going to be piloting this XO during the time of Victory Gundam. So we're going to get to see the best of this and the best of Crossbone all rolled into one cool package. There are a lot of Crossbone Gundams, and they're pretty much just color variations, and of course they have some armament differences. Now, Seabook Arno kicked off the whole thing. He was the protagonist of F91. He didn't get a second suit there, but you can call the X1 his second if you want. And then he passed that on to Tobia, who started in the X3, and they both fought, of course, Kincaid more so, against Zabine Sharo, who he faced off with in F91, the movie, before the X1 dueled it to the X2, dueled with the X2 in what was a fantastic fight. And it seems like the XO is supposed to be a predecessor and something that was supposedly lost and yet was found just in time for Tobia to come help a new protagonist in the era of V Gundam. Now sadly, even though all those recolor possibilities exist, we've only actually had two model releases. The original version KA, which you can see over there, of the X1, and it also comes with the Kai and the Kai Kai parts. Uh, there's a lot of Crossbone Gundams. And you can also get the full cloth version, which is Tobias from the Steel 7. It's fantastic. Sadly, we've never gotten an X3, and I wonder if we'll get an XO. And in hindsight, I ended up painting this one into the XO, and I probably should have used that one just because it has a few more appropriate armaments and a better skull for the chest. For the colors that I used, right or wrong, there's Shine Red there. It's not the perfect Gundam Red, but you can see it all over the place. It's one of the most prominent colors outside of the silver. And then, of course, there's a little bit of white there just to bring out the colors of the skull and things like that. And also for the V-fin, which is red and white, I also use some dark gray along there. That's sort of the third of the tertiary color, if you want to call it that. And then the most important thing, though, has to be the two silvers. So I used a couple different ones. Mr. Color 8, this is silver, and it's going to be metallic and shiny. And also some of this one. And I figured that by using two different colors of silver, that it might just differentiate itself a different, uh, little bit. So what I did is I sprayed some of this on the white, some of them on the blue, uh, because the X1, of course, is a very dark navy blue, and they looked really different on the tests. However, so what I did is I painted this over the blue and this over the white, thinking that it would set it apart, but when you actually see it there, yeah, it all just looks like one color of silver. And this sort of introduced a little bit of a dilemma for me, just because I didn't really know exactly how to paint this, because this is a very young series and there's very little information about it, including especially line art and details about weaponry and things like that, but most importantly, the colors. They're just not clearly laid out. I went to the blog of the author and he has some information and he has a completely different picture from what was actually shown in Gundam Ace. He said specifically that it's not mechy parts, it's supposed to be grey. However, when you see it in the actual thing, it looks a lot better and they're always, it's always being referred to as silver. And the whole ghost motif and the just when I saw the art, I decided to go with silver. Whether that was right or wrong, uh, we'll of course find out when there's better line art out in the future. And also in that promotional art piece, I'll have a link down below, or just from the cover, you can see that there's going to be some of the parts the legs are hidden, so I had to sort of just guess the way to go with that. So over time, this may actually get repainted as we get to see more of it, especially once it starts showing up on the covers of manga. Now I'm treating this more as a work in progress, but anyway, what uh, you can see here is that the dark grey is just down there on the waist section and on the arms. 
little bit of trim above the red here, which sets it apart from the X2, which has yellow and purple. This one having red there makes it quite different in terms of feel from the X2. And up here, you're going to have the very familiar Tobia on the X3 had the red and white. On the X3, they were a lot more oversized. On the XO, they seem to be a lot smaller. So this seems appropriate. He should have a skull up there. But really upon reflection and more carefully looking at that one page of artwork that we've got colored, it appears that he does have the Muramasa Blaster, which is of course Tobia's most famous weapon, and it would have been much better to get the full cloth for that. And this old X1, the one from the version KA, is just a lot more realistic than the cartoony one, which is much more appropriate for the manga, and something that hopefully I'll be able to swap off in the near future. Here's the X2 for comparison, and this was painted with a glossy black, so it's really going to come across as looking quite different from the XO, that even though it is listed as metallic, the paint color, it's certainly nowhere near as glossy. Anyway, you can just see some of the differences, that purple being the secondary color here where it's applied as opposed to the yellow. Again, with just one page to go off of, this could change because one of my friends here reminded me, you can never trust colorists in manga, and if you go read Jojo and you look at the covers of that, you'll know what I mean. So anyway, I'm pretty happy with this, but as a work in progress, it certainly stands out compared to the X2. I'd like to have it next to the X1 and X3, but I don't have them here with me to compare. But anyway, I think it's actually very interesting, and I wonder, do you think that it looks like a ghost? Now this being early in the series, like I said, we don't know exactly which weapons we're going to see so far. So even though he does seem to have the brand markers, he doesn't have the eye field generator or the X3, what it had on its forearm. And it's going to have, I don't know if we've seen the screw rips yet, it does have the anchors though that are going to shoot out from the waist section so that he can grab somebody and then lay down a whole bunch of pain, which I'm sure I can sympathize with anybody who's lost to the X1 in Extreme Versus. We've seen the knives come out of the feet if he wants to go for the kick, but the most interesting thing is that he's got a very interesting kind of gun where it's uh, sort of unique looking. It's got sort of, he's got two pistols in either hand it looks like, and what they can do is sort of bend it down like this, and when they bend down like that, they end up generating what looks like dual beam sabers so that there's one coming out of either side, and then when he goes for a slashing motion, it's gonna come across as being something a lot larger, so something like this. So anyway, if I ever feel like doing a mod, and if I ever figure out how to do that, of course, we'll see how that looks, but in the time being, I'm just going to be using these old X1 weapons as a stopgap measure until I guess I go out and buy another and paint up a blue Muramasa blaster. Still so many questions to be answered from Ghost. Could we see this kind of battle again? Will somebody find a black crossbone Gundam? What kind of mobile suit is the main protagonist going to end up in? And is Tobia going to stay in the Ghost the whole time? So many questions and so much anticipation. So anyway, everybody, I'd really like to hear your feedback, both about the paint job and about the manga and about Crossbone Gundam in general. What about future sales? Could we be seeing a master grade of this, the X2, the X3, the XO? Yes, that would all be fantastic. What about the colors? Should it have been dark gray? Or what about the silvers? It uh, would have been nice, I suppose, if I had had the two-tone silver on there. In some lights, I want to think that the chest is going to end, the top part of the shoulders is going to look different than the bottom. But 99% of the time, nah, it's just looking pretty much the same. What about the choices for colors down here in terms of the red and the gray? Anyway, why don't you let me know, and of course there will be more information and we'll get a lot more artwork from the manga in black and white and hopefully some more color spreads in the future so that we can make the call as to whether this was the right guess or not. Anyway, I'd love to hear your feedback about this. I'm not very good at painting and this is pretty easy because it's just one mono color pretty much all over the place with a few little details, but I'd love to hear your feedback and it's still a work in progress, so things can get fixed. I still gotta add the red on the face and stuff like that. Anyway, everybody, Robert184, thanks for watching this. Every once in a while, there will be a painted guy on there. In general, though, they're all gonna be painted for a purpose because Bandai hasn't put out the kit for lazy modelers like me just to assemble and not have to go through the trouble. But then again, it's also fun because you get that sense of satisfaction for putting it all together. So why don't you let me know, and I look forward to seeing you with lots more reviews of the odd painted one and mostly right out of the box. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya. And I can only end on this note. Yes, Bandai Namco, please take my 500 yen and give us this as DLC. And throw in the X3 too, if you would, please.